Tonight, in the Department of Science Research, something uniquely Australian, an absolute staple of the full ball community. The Sportco, and then later OMARC, 44 target rifle. So, we've talked about Sportco on the channel before. Namely, this Model 62A22. Sporco made a wide range of firearms for the Australian market, including this specialist target rifle. So in the late 60s, the great split occurred in the target rifle community where it separated off from its link to the service rifle at the time, with the adoption of the SLR occurring a few years earlier. There was an experiment by SAF Lithgow to create a target rifle based on the, uh, the SLR itself as a single shot. Uh, we'll flash up a photo of it. It's quite an awkward looking thing with a giant towering front sight on it. Uh, but it was deemed unnecessary and uh, still not quite capable of the accuracy required. Sportco cracked the code on making a target rifle for the now specialist sport. The 44 weighs in about eight pounds and has a 26 inch heavy barrel. Okay, sorry, we'll use the right end. They did come with sights fitted. However, you could slap whatever sighting arrangement you wanted on it. Parkhale 5C, this one is a Rawson. Front sight is usually a tunnel arrangement like this. Some were sleeved, this one's just been clamped on. Macroma sights, you've got to look after them. So most of them were quite easily removable, just like this Rawson by the removal of this screw. And the whole arrangement of the dovetail will just pop off like so. The action itself, uh, in its raw form, is beautifully simple. It's a three lug uh, rotating bolt design with, you'll note, no magazine feed. That obviously adds stiffness and rigidity to the action. Is that right, Mia? My obligatory beagle has just arrived on scene. So, no magazine requirement, so one wasn't fitted. The ejection port is as small as it can be, while still allowing enough space to thumb your round or drop it into the, to the, uh, the loading port and press forward on the bolt, come up onto the mound, close down the bolt and take your shot. So, very strong, very solid. There are two sling points, one down here, one up the front for the obligatory two-point front target sling arrangement. You'll note there is a barrel band up the front and a top guard to protect the fingies. Not that barrels get particularly hot in target rifle, although 20 rounds of 308, yeah, it'll get a little warm, but you're probably not Bernie's warm. This was more about comfort of how you're gripping the rifle whilst on target. The trigger is entirely adjustable. However, if you adjust it down too light, uh, like this one has been, Sometimes if you work the action too fast, it will drop the firing pin. That is why Target Rifle has a requirement to do an action cycle when you first appear on the mount. So, stocks, timber, uh, you'll often see some of these converted post-fact uh, that have been split in half uh, and a filler placed in between to allow a, uh, an Anschultz target rail in between for hand stops or sliding swing points. These guns were overtaken later on in history by about the 1980s by higher CNC machined, uh, total accuracy machines like the Barnard Action. But these guns are still kicking around as club learners or uh, lone rifles at the various clubs around the place. So, let's take a close look at some of the features with the close-ups. But namely, to get the actual bolt out on this one, we've got a little bit of a problem as the rear sight base actually covers the lever for the bolt removal. Uh, luckily it is still accessible through this uh, little porthole here. And we can drop the bolt out. So, as stated, it's a three lug locking assembly, okay, with a plunger ejector and a tiny little extractor claw. Um, Yep, it is possible if you've got too hot a or nuclear hand load, you will uh, rip your case rim off. 
everything from there back is pretty common to any other bolt action out there with the back of the uh, firing pin acting as a cocking indicator itself. It is a cock on open action, which uh, makes it a little stiff on the updraft, but for target rifle where you're firing slower than one round a minute, it, uh, it doesn't really matter. You'll also note the bolt angle, okay? It's a very short throw. That's what the third lug provides you, is a shorter bolt throw of only 60 degrees. Now this is a little bit later model of uh, 44 Mark, as it is actually fitted with a manual safety here, this little wheel. Uh, I actually owned an Omark many, many years ago that had been split with a rail on it, and I actually mounted a scope on it. It did not have a safety, which is a little bit unique, as there isn't really a requirement for one in target rifle. With a scope, uh, and even on the aperture sights, these are MOA guns, or even tighter, depending on the quality of the ammunition you feed. The guns and the barrels from factory were optimised for the service ammunition of the age, which at the time was the L1A1 round, uh, later on the F4 ball round. Effectively, 144 full jacket. Later on, you could stretch them out, obviously, when the rules change to 155s, uh, and the barrels will still stabilise. Anything heavier than that, though, you're maxing out the twist rate on this barrel, which brings us to a bit of a problem with the uh, Omark design, or well, Sportco design. Changing barrels. Much like the SSG69, which we've also done a video on in the channel, you can't really change a barrel terribly easily as it's a sleeve fit, so, sorry, press fit. So to change a barrel out effectively, you need to machine off the barrel, cut a thread internally, and then screw in a replacement barrel. And companies such as MAB Engineering were the first to start doing that or making barrel adapters. Obviously, most uh, barrel makers and gunsmiths in Australia have cracked that code and have worked on it. But MAB Engineering is important. MAB were a company out of uh, Brisbane, and in 1984, they bought the rights to the Omark design. Now, I keep using Omark instead of Sportco 44, because that's what they're better referred to as. As, in 1970, Sportco sold on their rights to the Omark company. And that's what is actually marked on this one. It's actually dual marked. Sportco Model 44, made in Australia by Omark. 7.62 caliber. Three digit date code, uh, sorry, two digit, sorry, two letter, the three digit date code uh, is entirely irrelevant uh, as they chopped and changed serial number blocks and letter blocks all over the place. We talked about this in the previous video. So, very, very accurate, but in 1984, the world had pretty much moved on to other things. That said, MAB still kept developing the Omark 44 action and actually built conversions to 5.56, which was done by means of changing the barrel and the bolt head. Relatively easy when you look at it. The bolt head is actually removable by way of a pin, and we'll cover that in the close-ups. Sights, as I said, differed. This is a Rawlson. You could fit a Parkhale 5C or whatever kind of Anschutz micrometer you had or wanted. And the guns still are accurate to this day. If the barrel hasn't been shot out, as this one is still the original, it shoots fantastically. A unique piece of Australian design and firearms history. And they're really cheap. So if you wanted to get one of these from uh, second hand, from someone in your local club or uh, one sitting on a dealer rack somewhere, used guns, you can see them going for about 400, 450, even as cheap as 300 bucks, depending on condition and what modifications have been made. You can scope them like my other one was and uh, enjoy them for what they are. A very, very accurate single shot 7.62 target rifle. Now, with an extremely accurate Australian made rifle, you gotta wonder, why didn't the Australian Army pick these up as a sniper rifle? Well, 60s, Australia sort of lost its way in terms of uh, sniper doctrine anyway. But the Omark 44 was trialled as an official sniper rifle. And uh, there are a couple of photos floating around the internet of these being scoped up in a service style spec. 
and there is out there somewhere a couple of workshop variants, uh, trials variants, that were fitted with magazines. Unfortunately, they proved a little bit unreliable uh, in terms of feeding, and uh, the whole program was eventually abandoned, which is a bit of a shame because an Australian-made sniper rifle in the era of the L42 or the, uh, the early designs of the Accuracy International type would have been really, really cool. But, say la vie. It soldiered on, however, as a target rifle that it is. So if you've got one of these, please comment down below. All the interactions help us out here. We're now over 1,500 subscribers here at Department of Sale Armament Research. That's thanks to your engagement. So keep commenting, talk about your experiences with them or why you potentially moved on, and uh, enjoy the sport of shooting, folks. There are many different facets to it. Target rifle is just one of them. Have a good one.